Zenject is a lightweight dependency injection framework that was created just for Unity. Dependency injection is a design pattern whereby one object supplies the dependencies of another object. It improves the modularity, maintainability, and testability of your code. Check out this player class. It depends on some implementation of iAudio service to play an explosion effect when the player runs out of health. It fills this dependency by creating an instance of the audio service class. This works, but it locks the player class into this specific implementation of iAudio service. What if we needed to use a different implementation? We could just update player, but what if we had a bunch of other classes that had done the same thing? We could update those too, but wouldn't it be great if we could just define how all these dependencies got filled in one place? I mean, this enemy spawner class doesn't really care how the system produces audio, it just needs any old object that implements iAudio service. What if we just added audio service to the constructor and let someone else figure out which implementation to use? That's where Zenject comes in. With Zenject, we can define all of the project dependencies in installers, like this one. Using very simple syntax, we can bind every dependency on iAudio service to a single instance of the audio service class. And if we need to change it, all we need to do is update the binding. This implementation adds a debug statement to the console whenever a sound is played. Now, let's create a binding for our enemy spawner so Zenject can give it the instance of iAudio service that we just defined. By marking the binding non-lazy, we're telling Zenject to create an enemy spawner as soon as the scene starts. Zenject knows to give it an instance of iAudio service because enemy spawner's constructor has an iAudio service parameter. Mono behaviors, on the other hand, don't have constructors, so how do we inject an instance of iAudio service into a game object component like player? We'll need to use the inject attribute. When the scene starts, Zenject will scan every mono behavior in the scene hierarchy for methods marked with inject and attempt to resolve each of their dependencies. Now that we've defined our bindings and set up our classes to receive injections, the next step will be to add the installer to the scene. We'll do this by creating a scene context object, which can be found in the Zenject submenu of the game object creation dropdown. Now all we need to do is add the installer component to the scene and link it to the newly created scene context. Installers can be added directly to the scene context or placed within their own game objects. We'll add ours directly to the scene context object. Now, before we start our game, let's validate the bindings by clicking Edit, then Zenject, and then Validate Current Scenes, or by using the shortcut Control shift v If there aren't any errors, the console will say, All scenes validated successfully. Otherwise, it'll display an error message to help us hunt down what went wrong. An alternative shortcut, and one that you should probably get into the habit of using, is Control shift r which validates the scene and then runs the project if there aren't any errors. This is a good habit to get into that can save you a lot of time, especially if you're making a lot of changes to the code. This simple binding that we just created only scratches the surface of what Zenject and Dependency Injection can do for your project. To learn more, head on over to Zenject's documentation. There'll be a link in the description. Also, check out the Zenject Cheat Sheet, which provides an assortment of examples of some different binding scenarios that you may encounter.